Featured throughout the Fallout series, the forced evolutionary virus is an artificial pathogen created by West Tech's research and development team. Its ability to force changes in both the genotype and phenotype made it one of the most sought after mutagens before and after the Great War. Prior to the Great War, a disease swept across the United States called the New Plague. To create a cure for the plague and defend against China's biological weapons during the Sino-American War, intense research dubbed the Pan-Immunity Virion Project began. In order to combat the newest biological weapons, the decision was made to create a viral defense that would alter uninfected DNA and render it immune to standard viral infection. Through this, the ability to completely alter and mutate the human body was discovered. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained. And, as heavily requested, today we're exploring the forced evolutionary virus. With these breakthroughs and new strains, the Pan-Immunity Virion Batch 10-011, renamed the forced evolutionary virus, was born. The first experiments took place March 21, 2075, on single-celled organisms. While their base metabolism appeared unchanged, their immunity to infection and radiation exceeded all expectations. The next stage of experimentation included flatworms. Infected on May 9, 2075, they exhibited a 28% increase in size, resistance to multiple viral contagions, and a new DNA structure. June 30, 2075 saw the next stage, with several white mice infected with FEV. Within hours, they exhibited increased growth, stabilizing at a 31% increase after 9 days. The most dramatic growth occurred in striated muscle tissue and certain internal organs, including the liver, heart, and kidneys. An increase in intelligence was also noted, enabling the mice to run mazes in less than half the normal time. The final experiment with FEV batch 10-011 occurred with rabbits. On November 9th, 2075, 218 rabbits were infected, half of which were implanted with electrodes to monitor changes in EEG activity. Increased electrical activity was noted 3.2 seconds after infection, accompanied by the typical increase in size. To their surprise, a new effect was also noted, an increase in aggression and posturing, particularly among males. Dissection of their brains would reveal increased dendritic connection, particularly in the limbic system and frontal cortex, areas responsible for behavior, senses, and high mental functions. On January 6, 2076, West Tech was effectively nationalized after military units were deployed to corporate facilities across the US in the interest of national security. Experiments continued with Batch 11-011, a new virus that featured improved mitotic cycle efficiency by a factor of 43%. As part of the test, 53 raccoons were infected with a new strain on January 26, 2076. Along with the expected size increase, behavioral tests confirmed an increase in intelligence and manual dexterity. This actually enabled them to escape confinement and wander the facility until all but two of them were hunted down. In February, the West Tech facility in Appalachia joined the FEV research effort and was ordered to begin human experimentation in what was dubbed the Super Mutant Program. Due to the virulent nature of the virus and its unpredictability, the facility's objective was to identify and isolate viable FEV strains through a variety of methods. And so, a few weeks later, the water supply of Huntersville was contaminated, inhabitants were walled in, and scientists observed the horrific mutagenic transformations that followed. Further development occurred after several new gene sequences provided by Major Barnett's advisory team were spliced into FEV batch 11-011. Designated 11-101A, it was used to infect 23 dogs of pure and mixed breeds on May 13, 2076. The results included nearly immediate growth accompanied by increased aggression and no notable increase in intelligence. 92 allele pairs were chosen for splicing with batch 11-011, giving birth to batch 11-111. Despite complaints from the science team, following experimentation of the new hybrid batch on 15 chimpanzees, FEV research in California was transferred to the Mariposa military base to continue under the lead of Leon von Helden and Robert Anderson. This new batch had been chosen as the basis for further development through human experimentation, offering a near 100% success rate on lab animals, while granting an approximately 60% increase in size and potential 200% intelligence increase. It was the perfect basis for mass-producing super soldiers. The branch continued by pushing FEV to its practical limits and experimenting with recombinant strains. The experimental strains resulted in the creation of many unsustainable mutations, either rendering the subject unable to breathe, converting them into a massive retinal tissue, producing teeth that pierced the brainstem to a hyperactive nervous system that caused so much pain subjects had to be terminated. Another research effort was set up by the Vault Tech Corporation in Washington, D.C. at Vault 87, which was established as an independent research center for Dr. Wayne Merrick. 
Humans subjected to a strains exhibited superior physical developments such as increased size, strength, and endurance to environmental factors, but were also characterized by significant mental issues and extreme aggression to non-mutants. The Mariposa team would ultimately prove to be the most successful with their FEV2 strain, which created powerful super soldiers that were resistant to damage, aging, and disease, but suffered reduced intelligence. Intelligence could theoretically be increased. However, before this breakthrough was reached, soldiers under the command of Roger Maxson rebelled and executed the science staff. With the Great War destroying the US, Mariposa and all the research within it was sealed by the soldiers and abandoned. The Vats were rediscovered in 2102 by an expedition led by Harold, a major hub merchant that survived the Great War. Accompanied by Richard Gray, a brilliant exile from Vault City, he managed to crack the Mariposa base of security and infiltrate the lower levels. Unfortunately, an automated crane surrounding the Vats struck them, knocking Harold out and flinging Gray into the pool of FEV. Harold woke up in the waste outside the base, mutated due to exposure to FEV fumes, and became a special type of ghoul-like mutant. Gray, on the other hand, was not so lucky and underwent extreme mutation due to prolonged exposure to the virus in the vat. While disfigured, his intellect grew exponentially and Gray began researching FEV himself, experimenting with animals, and eventually captured scavengers that strayed into the facility. Reviewing his data, he concluded that failed mutations were caused by the inoculating effect mutated FEV had, and so began to pick subjects more carefully. With this breakthrough, he created the first real super mutants in January of 2103, and through a combination of willing converts and abductions, the master slowly built up his army over the next three decades. After dipping two different animals into the virus at the same time, the resulting fusion inspired him to begin formulating a philosophy of unification. Following a series of directed mutations by injecting doses of the virus into various areas of his mutated body, Gray would gain the ability to neurologically link with computers, allowing him to access the base's databanks. Aided by the new information, he began assimilating the minds of others, creating the fledging Master Hive Mind. FEV is essentially a megavirus with a protein sheath reinforced by ionized hydrogen. Because of this, it's able to absorb neutrons without becoming radioactive. The shifting absorptive virus copies DNA patterns and stores them in exons, much like a retrovirus. These exons combined with FEV are re-injected into the host cells, causing them to regenerate with the new corrections. The virus comes preloaded with introns of corrected DNA that eradicate recessive genes responsible for ailments and alters RNA strands for greater transmission of signals. As was the aim, DNA that's altered by the virus renders the subject immune to biological weapons, radiation, and common diseases. Cellular division rate is increased and non-regenerating tissue, such as neural tissue and non-somatic cells, miraculously begin to replicate, allowing for real-time regeneration. The skin tone then changes substantially and becomes grey with tints of light green that become more pronounced with age. The skin becomes much thicker and resistant to trauma, including cuts, bruises, and damage from fire, acids, or even gunfire. Despite this resistance, completely destroyed tissue cannot regenerate and will result in permanent scarring or organ loss. Increased size of neural transmitters and synaptic receivers in the body then give the super mutants acute reflexes and heightened senses, making them a foe not to be trifled with. Following the Great Winter of 2130, the Master stepped up his operations and spread them out into the wasteland, increasing the size of his army, now known as the Unity. By 2152, the Unity's influence continued to spread, and the Master would recruit a group of Doomsday cultists to act as his spies. Four years later, the cultists would form the Children of the Cathedral. Acting as a front for the Unity, they preached, recruited, and prepared munition dumps for the coming Super Mutant Offensive. Between 2155 and 2156, the Master then made another important discovery. His forces intercepted a caravan of Vault Dwellers, leading him to discover Vault Tech's demonstration vault. Moving his command there, he then used the cultists to set up the Cathedral, and launched a campaign to find more vaults with prime subjects for his super mutant army. The Master then experimented with FEV by injecting it into the brains of subjects, usually the pineal gland, but also the amygdala and medulla, triggering changes in brain chemistry. These experiments created four extremely powerful psychers that were theoretically capable of wiping out the human race. While these transformations are extremely difficult to revert, theoretically, the mutation could be reversed through infection of a secondary virus that contained a copy of the subject's original DNA and forced recursive growth again, thus replacing FEV's modified strands. 
Because it was necessary to neutralize FEV to prevent mutation from reoccurring, this type of procedure was impossible with pre-war technology. However, the Institute's advanced FEV research would change this, and Dr. Brian Virgil would create a serum to revert his mutation. Like FEV, the serum was a retrovirus using recombinant counter-intron sequences and transcriptive exon strands together with a genetic sequencer to counteract the strain of FEV Virgil was infected with. Unfortunately, because each cure would need to be tailored to the specific strand the host was infected with, creating a formula for mass inoculation is virtually impossible. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Come join our regular streams on Twitch. And uh, yeah, if you have any other suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.